This is Bill Peterson, also known as the White Tornado, here for Geek Funk Labs with the fifth in our series of lesson videos showing you how to create patches and banks for Fluid Patcher, the open source software synthesizer interface that's used in the Squishbox and the Headless Raspberry Pi synthesizer. In this lesson, I'll show you how to add sequencers and arpeggiators to your bank files. These are tools that can automatically play patterns of notes when you hold down a set of keys or press a button. As you can see, I have the Fluid Patcher editor opened up, and I've already started a bank file with a single patch in it. If you need a quick reference on the bank file format and how all the keywords work, you can go to the wiki on the Fluid Patcher GitHub page, which is linked in the video description below. Let's create a sequencer in this first patch. A sequencer is a tool that will automatically play a note pattern that you create ahead of time whenever you trigger it. To add some sequencers to a patch, we add a sequencers keyword at the patch indent level. You can add as many sequencers as you want within the sequencers keyword. Each one just has to start with a unique name. I'll call this one loop. Now we have to create a list of notes to play. As you've seen in other lessons, list items can be on separate lines with a dash at the beginning, or you can put them all on the same line as long as you put square brackets around them. To figure out what notes I want, I'll open up the MIDI monitor while I play some keys. The format for the notes in a sequencer is the same as for the messages keyword we talked about in a previous lesson. So this will be a note type message, and it will play on channel 1, and it's note number 63, but I can also use the note name, E flat 4, and I'll give it a velocity of 100. I'll just add the rest of the notes. Now we need a way to tell it when to play. I'd like it to play when I press this button, which it looks like sends control change 24. So I'm going to route that MIDI message to the sequencer. I'll just create a router rule of type control change with parameter 1 equal to controller 24. And now I'll add a sequencer parameter to the rule, where the value is the name of the sequencer loop. Now once I apply these changes, we can hear that the sequence plays when I hold down the button. Let's look at what some of the sequencer parameters do, and some other ways you can trigger the sequence. I'll do this in a new patch, which I will call Magic Loop. And I'm going to add two presets to this channel, one that will be played by the keyboard, and one that will be played by the sequencer. And this shows that the sequencer can play notes on a channel that your keyboard isn't connected to. I'll name this Sequencer Magic, and I'll use that same note pattern, but I'm going to have the notes play on channel 2, and I'll also bump them up an octave. One parameter you can add to sequencers is a tempo parameter, which specifies the number of beats per minute. The default is 120, but let's set this to 110. You can also specify the length of each note using the tdiv parameter. The value you give for this parameter specifies the number of notes that should fit into four beats, which is often what's considered to be a measure of music. So what this means is that a value of four means your notes are one beat each, or quarter notes. A value of eight makes them eighth notes, 16 makes them 16th notes. So this parameter is basically the time divisor of your notes, and it can actually have any numerical value. Now I'll add a router rule to trigger this sequence, and I would actually like this sequence to just play three times and then stop, without me having to hold the button down. Now the way a router rule actually triggers a sequencer is that the value sent by the rule actually tells the sequencer how many times to loop. If it's a negative value, the sequencer will loop forever, and if it's zero, the sequencer stops. So in the first patch, when I press the button, it sends a value of 127, so the sequencer will loop up to 127 times. But when I let go of the button, it sends a value of 0, which stops the sequencer. So to get the magic sequencer to loop exactly three times, I'll add a parameter 2 to this router rule that transforms that value of 127 into 3. Since the value of 0 isn't captured by this router rule, it won't do anything when I release the button. The sequencer will just keep going until it finishes its three loops. So now if I apply that patch, you can hear that the button does trigger that sequencer to play three times exactly. So this allows me to play something like this. 
which hopefully demonstrates how sequencers might be used in performing popular music, perhaps. We've seen how sequencers can play melodies, but of course they can also play drum patterns. So let's make one of those and also look at some more features of sequencers. Now anytime you change patches, any sequencers that were part of the old patch will stop playing. If you want a sequencer to be able to keep playing when you change patches, you should put it at the bank level. So let's do that with our drum sequencer. I'll need a drum preset at the bank level, and I'll put it on MIDI channel 10, which is kind of the standard for drum presets, even though it's not required for Fluid Patcher, but it will also keep it from interfering with any of my patch presets. So for my drum pattern, I'll just start with a super simple uh, kick, hi-hat, snare, hi-hat pattern. So as you can see in the monitor, those are notes 36, 38, and 42. Now I'll add some router rules to trigger the sequencer. Now what I'd like to do is to be able to press the play button, the triangle, and have the drum sequence loop forever until I press the stop button, the square. And those buttons send control changes 21 and 22. So what I'll do is add two router rules. The first will route 127 from controller 21 to a value of negative one, and that will make the drums sequencer loop forever, and then I'll route value of 127 from controller 22 to zero, which will stop the drum sequencer. So now if I apply that patch, I can just tap the play button and the drums start playing and they keep playing until I hit stop. So you saw before that we can set the tempo of a sequencer with a parameter, but we can also control it dynamically using a router rule. I'll use this knob that sends controller number 15 and I'll add a router rule that maps the values of 0 through 127 sent by the controller to some tempo values of 50 to 200 beats per minute. Now I just add a tempo parameter to the router rule and give it the name of the sequencer I wanted to control, the drum sequencer. Pro tip, you can use these tempo router rules to control the tempo of sequencers and arpeggiators, which I'll cover in a minute, as well as MIDI file players, which I'll cover in a future lesson. So make sure you use unique names for all of your sequencers, arpeggiators, and MIDI file players. So let's do some things to make this drum pattern sound a little bit better. Let's check out the swing parameter. Now you may understand what swing feels like in music, but what the swing parameter does mathematically is sets how to split up the time between the first and second note in each pair of notes. More exactly, it sets what fraction of the time to give to the first note. So a value of 0.5 will make both notes equal time, but a value of 0.66 will give two thirds of the time to the first note and the remaining third to the second note. As you can hear, this creates a very familiar triplet swing feel. You can use any value between 0 and 1 here, but less than 0.5 or more than about 0.9 will start to sound pretty odd. Another way we could improve this pattern is that right now the hi-hat only plays on the ands of every beat. It would probably sound better if it played on every eighth note, but to do that we would have to have two notes playing at once. The easiest way to accomplish this is just to create two sequencers and have them start at the same time. So let's make another sequencer called hi-hat and we'll just give it a sequence of four hi-hats in a row. Now we don't need the hi-hats in the drum sequencer, so we can just make their velocity zero. We could also make the note number zero, since there's nothing assigned to note number zero in the drums preset. These are both ways of creating a rest in a sequence. Now to keep the hi-hat sequencer synchronized with the drums, we'll just add copies of those three router rules. And as you can hear, those two patterns play together now. Let's add a bit of variation to this pattern so it doesn't sound so robotic. I'll add four more notes to the drums pattern and stick in an extra kick on the end of beat three. It's okay that the sequences have different numbers of notes. The hi-hat will now just play twice for every single loop of the drums pattern. One more thing I'll do to humanize this drum pattern a bit is add some dynamics to the hi-hat. I'll make the beats just a bit louder and the ands a bit quieter. So those are some things we can do with sequencers. Now let's look at arpeggiators. An arpeggiator is similar to a sequencer in that it repeats notes, but it specifically repeats the notes you send it by holding keys down. A lot of MIDI controllers, like this one even, have this feature built in. 
but by having this feature in Fluid Patcher, you have the ability to switch between different styles by switching patches, and even to have different styles play from different parts of the keyboard. Let's start with a simple arpeggiator in a new patch to see how it works. Notice I'm adding my piano preset to channel 2 instead of channel 1. I'll explain why in a minute. Each arpeggiator gets a name, just like sequencers. They can also use a lot of the same parameters as sequencers, except they don't get a list of predefined notes. Instead, you have to create a router rule that sends notes to the arpeggiator. So now when I hold down some keys, you can hear them being played one by one, and it repeats until I let go of the keys. If I had put that piano preset on channel 1, and then just routed those notes to the arpeggiator, we would actually hear all the notes play when I strike them, and then the arpeggiator would start repeating them, which isn't usually what people intend for an arpeggiator to do. Let's try out some other features. I'll create a second arpeggiator in this patch, and I'm going to have these keys trigger the style of the second arpeggiator, and the rest of the keys on down will trigger Peggy. I can just add a parameter 1 to my router rules to specify which keys go to which arpeggiator. I'll also add a parameter 2 that forces all the notes going to Sergei to have a velocity of 80. This way if I don't hit one of the keys quite hard enough, it won't sound out of place. So in addition to the parameters for sequencers, arpeggiators can also have an octaves and a style parameter. Octaves sets the number of octaves over which to repeat the held notes. Style sets the order in which the held notes should be played. If you don't give a style, the default is just to play them in the order the keys were hit. But you can sort them in order going up, or down, or both up and then down. A sequencer parameter we didn't test that also works for arpeggiators is Groove. Now, Groove can alter the volume at which notes are played according to a pattern. We actually manually added some Groove in our hi-hat sequencer, and as you heard, that can help to give a more rhythmic feel. Groove can be a single number or a list of numbers. If it's a single number, then the velocity of the first note in each pair of notes gets multiplied by that number, and the second note is played at normal velocity. You can create more complicated groove patterns to suggest different rhythms. For example, this one creates a triplet feel. There's one more arpeggiator style, and that is the chord style, and that will just repeat all of the held notes at once. Let's try it out in a new patch. This can give you another way to play accompaniments, especially if you use a groove pattern like this. This lesson should have demonstrated a lot of the features of sequencers and arpeggiators, as well as some different ways you can use them in performances. Keep a lookout as we've got more lessons on the way, and remember to stay funky.